Hey. <laughs> Hey, good morning, Transit. So glad you guys decided to be here today. Uh, hey, my name's Heath. If we haven't had a chance to meet, I'm so excited you decided to join us this morning. I don't think there's a better place you can spend your Sunday morning than right here in Transit. Hey, uh, real quick, how many of you guys like pizza? Real, uh, show your hands real quick. Great job. Hey, all, the, all of you who are building pizzas on stage with your hands tied behind your back, it was very impressive. Uh, I thought that was great. Yeah, great job. Uh, hey, I was thinking about uh, pizza a lot, and I don't know where you guys like to get your pizza. There's, there's so many options, right? These days, you can get pizza from a million different places, but one of my wife and I's favorite place to get pizza is from Mod Pizza. I mean, you guys like Mod Pizza in the room? Yeah, you get it, right? The best thing about getting pizza at Mod Pizza is you can make it whatever you want it to be, right? Like if your family likes weird stuff on the pizza, like anchovies or olives or something, and you don't want that, you can get your own pizza with whatever you want on it. I feel like sometimes for us, even uh, I, I'm one of the people, I like pineapple on pizza. Anybody else like pineapple? Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Oh, yep. 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 Others of you don't like that. So my, my wife doesn't like pineapple pizza. So when I go to Mod, I can get pineapple on my pizza because it's my own, right? I get to make it my own. So uh, what I did was I decided that I would go to Mod, as you can tell, I got the box here, and I got me a nice cheese pizza, uh, which I brought here today. And I thought that uh, just for part of my illustration today, I would make a cheese or a pizza together as a group. Will you guys help me out over here? Uh, what are some ingredients you guys like on pizza that... What now? Pepperoni, that's pretty popular, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I rounded up some of the things you guys said maybe, but some of them I, I, I struggled to find. And so uh, I heard some people say like pepperoni is a really good thing to put on pizza, uh, but I couldn't really find any pepperoni. Um, what I was able to find though uh, was I'm trying to eat healthy, you know, trying to like, like as I grow up, eat healthier. So I found some celery, which is kind of like pepperoni if you think about it. There, yeah, so I'm gonna put some celery on the pizza. Uh, okay, that's, that's an unpopular one. That's okay, it's okay. Uh, other people, I said, you know, maybe you like sausage on your pizza or ham or bacon. Uh, bacon goes good on everything. You know what goes good on everything? Chocolate chips goes good on everything. So I decided I'd put a bunch of chocolate chips on my pizza, uh, which makes it good. Let me spread those out so you like a good distribution. Um, Oh, does anybody like ranch on pizza? Do anybody like to dip? Same. Uh, but I, unfortunately, I couldn't find ranch. So this, uh, this horseradish sauce is going to have to do. So uh, I'll just put, I'll just do a little bit, you know, just a little, a little bit of horseradish there. That's good. And then I was thinking like, hey, I, I'm trying to, uh, my, my wife and I have a, a little eight-month-old baby uh, at home. And so uh, I'm trying to teach him, yeah, we all love Duncan. Uh, I'm trying to teach him how to eat like good, healthy foods and stuff. Like for instance, he has some carrots. So I want to be a good dad. So I, uh, I decided I'd put some, uh, some carrot baby food on there. Yeah, just to be healthy, you know, you want to eat your vegetables. Somebody said this should be illegal. I think you're probably right. All right. Is that enough? You want some more? All right. We'll do one more. All right. I hear you. We'll do one more. And then, and then let's be honest, guys. What is a pizza without, you know, you go to the pizza restaurants and they give you the little packets of like Parmesan and red pepper flakes. Yeah. I didn't have any of that either, but I did bring some cinnamon, which is kind of the same thing if you think about it. So we'll add some cinnamon on top. Yeah, there you go. That's a lot of cinnamon. Wow. And uh, all right, guys, check it out. What do y'all think of my pizza? Thumbs down. Oh, eat it. No way. No way. That's gross. I'm not going to eat that. The whole idea the whole idea of the pizza, guys, is that, in case you didn't notice, I ignored all of your advice. You guys told me all this great stuff to put on pizza, and I just ignored all of it, right? I just thought I knew better, right? I had good ideas. I had good intentions. Chocolate chips are delicious on a cookie, not necessarily on a pizza, right? I had great intention. You guys gave me great advice. I just didn't do a very good job of listening to your advice. If you think about it, we all kind of do some version of this all the time, maybe, hopefully, 
not with pizza. You don't, you know, make disgusting pizzas like this when you go to Mod. Hopefully you get normal stuff on your pizza uh, like a normal person. But we do this all the time. Think about all the times where you're given advice that you may or may not listen to it. Like maybe your parents are like, hey, you, uh, you need to go to bed early so that it's not so hard for you to wake up and go to school the next morning. But yet you want to stay up, hang out, play video games, watch TV, whatever you want to do. And then the next morning, getting out of bed is like the worst thing that's ever happened to you. Or maybe for some of you guys, your small group leaders uh, were, were inviting you guys to transit nights on Friday night. And you skipped it because you had other plans. And now everybody's talking about what a blast that was and how much fun they had. And you're like, man, I wish I would have listened to my small group leader's advice and joined everybody at transit night on Friday night. Or, or maybe for some of you, it's even, it's even deeper than that. It's like, hey, your parents have taught you to like, Treat people with kindness and respect, uh, but maybe one time you said something mean about a friend, and the results are you lost a friend over something mean you said one time. And the whole idea is that all of us, at some point in time, we hear good advice, but sometimes we think this. I don't need anyone's advice, right? Like, we think we've got it all figured out. Like, I can stay up late. It'll be fine. I'll get up in the morning. It's no big deal. I'll skip transit nights on Friday night. Like, Transit does a lot of events. I can just come to the next one. Or, you know what, it, I know my parents said to be nice to everybody, but this is going to be really funny, and so I'm going to roast my friends. But what we don't think about is that sometimes we have consequences to the things we choose to do. Like, for instance, I built this pizza, but now I'm sitting here thinking, it's almost lunchtime, and I'm kind of hungry, and I am not eating that pizza because that is gross, right? Like, like the consequences are I just wasted a whole pizza because I didn't listen to y'all's good advice. So time and time again, we get in trouble when people give us good advice, but we don't choose to listen. Well, today we're going to uh, look at a specific character uh, in the Bible who was king of Israel like 3,000 years ago. His name is Solomon. And Solomon uh, had an opportunity to kind of do the same thing you did. You see, Solomon became king over all of Israel when he wasn't very much older than a lot of you guys in the room. So imagine yourself becoming king or queen of a country, and you have you know, all this money, all this power, and you can do whatever you want. But wait, then God comes to you and says, hey, uh, I really want you to do a great job. I know you're kind of a young king or queen, uh, and I want to set you up for success. So um, ask me for whatever you want, and I'll make it happen for you. Now, if you're anything like me, I would instantly be going like, oh, wow, I want, you know, a ton of money or a bigger house. Or like, like you start thinking about all the things that you might want if God were to present that to you. But Solomon is a little bit different. Solomon says the one thing that he wants when God presents this opportunity to him is he says, hey, I want to be wise. I want wisdom in my life because it'll help me be a great king. Now, if you know the story of Solomon at all, he goes on to be a fantastic king and, and he takes his wisdom and he writes a lot of his wisdom down in a book that we call the Proverbs. And so today we're going to look at one of the Proverbs that he says where he kind of basically tells us how to not be like this and not ignore good advice, but instead to listen to and take good advice. Here's what he says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20. He says to get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise for the rest of your life. He says, hey, a lot of us are just like me making a pizza, just like some of you, and maybe a decision you made this week. Uh, we think we've got it all together. We think that we know best. We're like, hey, I, I've got it figured out now. You know, I'm, I'm 13, 14 years old. I, I've got this whole life thing figured out. And we think that we don't need advice. We don't need to listen to somebody who's maybe telling us something to save us from having a bad pizza or maybe a bad Friday night or a bad Tuesday morning. Uh, but instead, we, we ignore it and we say, hey, I think I've got this figured out all on my own. But Solomon says, no. Instead, he says to get all the advice and instruction you can. Literally, I want to highlight that just so to make sure you don't miss that. Get all the advice and instruction that you can. Because if you think about it, every single one of us in this room needs help at some point in time. We get to a, a place or a decision where we don't know what to do next. We don't know where to turn. We don't know what is the right decision to make. And we don't want to live with regrets. We don't want to make a nasty pizza. We don't want to hurt our friends. We don't want to miss out on a great opportunity because we didn't listen to good advice. And so Solomon's advice to us is to get all the advice and instruction that you can so that you will be wise for the rest of your life. Essentially what he's telling us is like, hey, if you listen to advice, your life will be better and you'll have fewer regrets. Like I'm looking at this pizza that I made over here and there are regrets that I've made. Um, horseradish and ranch are not the same, right? Cinnamon and Parmesan are not the same. Like I have regrets over this pizza that I made. Some of you guys may be here today and you're like, hey, I have regrets over a decision I made last week. Or I have regrets over a friendship that has kind of gone south because uh, of something that somebody said or did. Maybe you're living uh, your life with some regrets about unwise decisions you made. 
Solomon says, hey, if you would just be willing to listen to and ask for advice, you could probably save yourself a lot of those regrets and live a better life full of wisdom. And so essentially what we at Transit here want every single person in this room to know and to feel and to understand is that God has an amazing plan for your life. And he has something that he wants each and every one of you to experience. The problem is you have to be have enough humility, you have to, to, to be humble enough to ask for advice. And so we like to say it this way, is that a better life comes from listening to advice. If you listen to advice, you will have a better life. And I know that to be true because there are so many experiences and there's so many things that I've had in my life where if I would have just listened to someone else's advice, if I would have just listened to somebody who, who maybe had a, a little bit more figured out than I do, or maybe they've walked a mile in these shoes, or maybe they've done this the same decision before, I would save myself some regret or a bad decision. So my challenge for each and every one of you in the room is two things this morning. Number one, figure out who is wise in your life, right? We know this to be true. If you're going to ask for advice for somebody, you want to ask the right person. If you're struggling in math class, don't ask the kid in the class who has the lowest grade for advice on how to be good at math, right? You want to go to someone who's a little bit smarter or maybe like an older sibling or, uh, you know, get a tutor, somebody who knows a little bit more about math than you do. Um, if, if you're looking for someone to, to help you make a, a wise decision amongst friends, you know, the best place to go to is not like, uh, you know, somebody that doesn't have a ton of friends. They don't, they've never been through an experience like that. If you need help, think about a practical example like this. If you need help with your phone, like an app on your phone, you probably are not going to go to your grandma and ask her for help, right? With her like size 100 fonts, you know, that you can't even read anything because what? You probably already know more than she does. So what we want to do is figure out who in our life is wise and who we want to go to for advice. So think about who that would be in your life. Maybe it's a parent or an older sibling that you can go to. Maybe it's a, a teacher or a coach at school that you can kind of lean on and go to for advice. Maybe, hey, how about this? Every single one of us in this room has a small group leader that's probably sitting like arm's reach away from you right now that you could ask for advice uh, about, a, about a tricky situation. And hey, just like a quick shameless plug here, a lot of your groups have a high school impact leader of a high school student who was just in your shoes just a couple short years ago that they're like, I know what it's like to be in middle school. I was just there. Here's some ways that you can do better, make better decisions and have less regrets. So figure out who that is in your life. Who in your life do you consider wise and that you would trust to give you good advice? And here's the second thing, maybe the most important piece. Secondly, ask them for advice. Be humble and willing to go to them and say, like, hey, I, I don't really know what to do in this situation. Or, hey, I'm kind of stuck in this friendship and I don't know how to, to get past this thing that happened so that we can be friends again. Or, or, hey, I don't know how to talk to my parents about this situation. Maybe you should go to your small group leader and say, hey, what would you coach me to do in this? So figure out who in your life, in your life is wise. And secondly, be great about asking for advice. And here's the reason why I want you to do that. It's not because you can't figure it out. It's not because you guys aren't smart. It's not because uh, you can't make decisions. The problem is, is that if you lean on only yourself, you're going to have to live with the decisions that you make in the moment, and they may or may not always be the best decisions. So if we will be wise about listening to advice, we can live a life that has less regrets. Think about my pizza that I made earlier, right? Like I built this disgusting, gross pizza that has celery and chocolate chips and horseradish and baby food and cinnamon. Like that's probably not the best pizza ever. But I need to learn from my mistakes. And one of the things I thought about doing to illustrate, like, sometimes if you don't listen to good advice, you find yourself in a situation. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Should I do it? I... No, I don't know, guys. All right, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I didn't listen to your advice earlier. And you guys would have made me help make a better pizza. But now you're telling me to eat it. So I'm in this dilemma of do I want to listen to your advice or not? All right, I tell you what. Let's, no, I'm just kidding. It's so bad, guys. <laughs> it's so bad. How bad you're thinking it is? It's so much worse. The whole point is, you're going to have opportunities to listen to advice this week. I want you to think about whose advice you listen to. 
because you guys give terrible advice. <clears throat> I should not have eaten that. It's not good. I try not to throw up right now. Here's your challenge. In a few minutes, I'm going to dismiss you guys to go to a small group, and you're going to talk about whose advice you're listening to and how you can listen to better advice to have a better life. If you guys will, bow your heads and pray with me as I try not to throw up. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for transit. Thank you for a fun environment where we can learn about advice. God, I pray that all of us learned a lesson today that uh, bad advice doesn't just come from pizza. Sometimes bad advice comes in well-meaning, well-intended places. So God, thank you for the people you've put in our lives that give us good advice. Thank you for parents who love us. Thank you for teachers and coaches that go the extra mile to care about us. Thank you for these incredible small group leaders that give out great advice each and every week to our transit students. God, I pray this week would be a week that uh, we lean into good advice. We start paying attention to who we're listening to. And that, God, we would listen to advice that helps our life be better. We love you, God. We thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You